Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really gonna help me in improving this community. And today I'm gonna be continuing the Unity 3D Fundamentals. I want to walk you through how the audio sources work, how we can actually play a music by using the audio sources and the audio clip, and how we can add existing files that you already have into your Unity project. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in this video, and, and that is to show you how audio sources work. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a new folder where we're going to be storing the audio files. And this is normally what you can do to, you know, if you want to store the music for your game or the just the SFX for your game, then you can create a folder to do that. So this folder is going to be called Audio. And what I've done in the past, I created a folder called Music and then another one called SFX. And for this demo, I'm just going to put everything into the Audio folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Finder where I download it couple of tracks from the YouTube library. So let's go ahead and just download these two, move these two to the audio folder. And these happen to be mp3, mp3 files. So we'll just wait until the files get imported. And as soon as, soon as you import them, you'll see that they have, you know, kind of like a, like a wave of, of audio as the thumbnail. And this represents the real, basically the real wave that you'll see. So if I go ahead and if I go ahead and, and basically click on them, you'll see multiple options. You can see, you know, that you can force these to be mono. You have, you know, if you want to load this in the background, and you can also have, you know, different settings whether you want to decompress this on load, compress it in memory. I haven't really used a lot of these settings, but you're more than welcome to to test them out. So what I'm gonna do for this video, just to keep it simple, is we're gonna be creating a, a new game object. And then that game object is going to have what I call an audio controller. And that audio controller is going to be changing the music from basically the so synergy here to dream underscore electric. So let's go ahead and create a new game object. So I'm going to right click here in the hierarchy. And this one we're going to call it the audio manager. Then in the scripts, I'm going to create a new script. And this one is just going to be called also the audio manager. Excellent. And let's go ahead and click on this script and then associate that with the game object that we just created. Oops, let's wait until it compiles. Audio Manager, select it. And then we're also going to be adding an audio source to this. We're also going to be adding two audio sources to this. So there's going to be one. And an audio source is one of the components that you're going to need to be able to play, you know, to play your music. It basically takes in an audio clip and also an audio mixer. You can, you know, tell it whether you want this to be muted, you have a bypass effects, and then other settings. Also, if you want to play this on awake or not, if you want this track to be playing in the background and be, be looping, you can also set that here. Also, the priority of this, this is very important because if you're basically overlaying another audio source, this is going to play an important role. A role. So also the volume is very important, of course, and then the pitch, the stereo pan, and then some other settings that you can also you can also set. So for 3D sound settings, you can go go ahead and change the Doppler level, the spread, the volume rolloff, the minimum distance, the maximum distance. These are really important because if you you know let's say that I have a shape right here. In these, this shape, you only want the audio to be affected by this area, but not anything maybe that is that is further away from from the cube. You can use the 3D sound settings to be able to determine, you know, how far the objects need to be in order for that audio to be, you know, to be able to hear it. So, so let's keep this simple, and I'm gonna add another audio source. And in this audio source, we're going to have, so let's go ahead and go into the audio folder. So on the first one, I'm just going to drag and drop the dreams underscore electric. And then for the second one, we're going to do the synergy. Excellent. And then the other thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to disable the plane on awake on both of them. Excellent. And then we can leave the volume to one on, on either, either of those. Excellent. So now that we have those, I could I could easily go ahead and say, okay, you know, I want to play this one by default. 
So I set that to play and awake, and if I hit play, you can see that we're playing the game and we're listening to that music. If I wanted to, say maybe I wanted to play both of them. So if I hit play, maybe I want to overlay the, maybe I want the synergy not to be maybe 0.27. And then the other one is higher, so you can start overlaying some of those audio sources if you wanted to create maybe maybe a mix. And I could, you know, I could either bring this one down and then bring this one up if I wanted to. All right, excellent. So what I'm gonna do instead of instead of doing that through the inspector, which I just show you how to do, I'm going to basically remove the plate on awake and also the plate on awake on this one. So let's go ahead and concentrate on the scripting. So now you know that you know you can associate an audio clip with an audio source, and also you can have multiple of them. You can over basically overlap them, so you can have both of them running at the same time, but one with a higher volume. Maybe the other one has a different pitch. So for instance, if I let's go ahead and do this one more time, so I can show you the the pitch. So let's say that we have the pitch. So I'm gonna bring this one down and maybe the pitch it's going to be higher on that one you kind of see that it's changing the music as i'm changing the pitch you can also change the volume of course you're able to create some you know procedural procedural sounds by just making some changes to these parameters which is really cool all right, so let's go ahead and go back to the audio manager. I'm gonna open up the C-sharp script by double clicking on it. And let's wait until it opens up. I also like to, to do this from the, from the toolbar because sometimes it doesn't really load everything that it needs to load. So a lot of people ask me, Dilmer, why I can't use IntelliSense when I'm using VS Code? And the main reason is because you, you probably need to do the open C-sharp project and that basically recompiles everything and it basically loads the the C sharp code and the IntelliSense. So I, I done that before when I have issues with IntelliSense. Alright, so now that we have this audio manager, let's do let's do this. Let's go ahead and add a private. And then this private is gonna be a type of audio source. So you're gonna be to communicate with the audio source, you have to reference the audio source, of course, which is gonna be the type. And then this one we can just call it first track. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the second track. The reason why I like to do private variables instead of public is because I like to keep everything private and only if I serialize them, that's when I want to have them available to the inspector. That way if another script tries to access this, it doesn't have access to it unless I add a getter, all right, or a setter. All right, so now that we have that set, one thing that we can do here, and we can check a couple of things. We can say, okay, first track is not null, or if it's null, we can say, you know, we can tell the user that, that the first track hasn't been set. First track has not been set. And I like to do this all the time when I'm, whenever I'm, you know, I'm trying to get tools for for developers and then also the second track here you can say second track has not been set and the other thing that I normally do is I set the game object to false so that you can't really use this game object unless you have the first track and second second track set All right now that we have those set so if we get to here we know I'm gonna I'm gonna delete the update method if we get to here, we know that the first track and second track has been set. So one thing that we can do, we can say first track. We can say, okay, I wanna play, I wanna play that as soon as I get to here. And I also want to play the second track. Excellent, so let's go back into Unity. And right now, if I click on the, if I click on the audio manager, you'll see that they haven't been set. So I should be getting errors if I hit play. And in fact, this is actually getting disabled, and that is the behavior that I wanted. I'm basically setting it to disable if the first track or the second track has been set. So now that we know that we need to set that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop the first audio source 
and also drag and drop the second audio source. So now, instead of playing on awake by doing it through the inspector, I'm going to uncheck that and uncheck this here. So we should be able to hear both tracks because we're doing that right on the start. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and hit play. And as you can see, we can also hear the music because we're accessing the audio source through the C sharp code. So the other thing that I can do here is I can also lower the volume. I can say, okay, first track, and then we can say volume, and maybe the volume on this one is gonna be very low. We can say 0.1, and it's a flow value. And the second track, we can say that it's gonna be, you know, we can say 80% of it, so 0.8. Let's go back into Unity. Now let's go ahead and hit play. And if we go to the audio sources, you can see that the first track I have is set, let me go ahead and mute it so you can hear me. The first one is set to point, point 0.1, and that's what we did in the code, we told it to use point 0.1. And then on the second audio source, we're saying point 0.80, and that's what we told, we told it to do in the code. So that's, it's all getting set. So you basically have access to every single one of these. I could also tell it, you know, whether I want to loop or not. So I can say first track, and then I can say loop, whether it's gonna be true or false. So let's say that I say true on this one. You can also say on the second track, you wanted to change the pitch. I can also change the pitch in here by saying, okay, I want the pitch to be maybe 0.4F. So you have access to everything that you have access through the inspector. So that's really all I wanted to show you as part of the Unity Editor Fundamentals. And so just, just as a summary, I gave you an overview of what the audio source is, how you can add an audio file to, to your Unity project, and also how you can access the audio, basically the audio sources through a script. So that's all I'm gonna be doing today, guys. Thank you very much. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing tutorials and resources for game developers. And find me in Patreon.com, where I'm basically providing early access to source code and also videos that I'm working on or anything that I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you very much, guys.